In other news, for those of you who love stargazing, the Perseid meteor shower, meteor shower is considered one of the best. It's really going to be lighting up next week when it peaks on August 12th. NASA says the most plentiful showers have something between 50 to 100 meteors per hour. These meteors are rocks or dust left by a massive comet, and when it comes close to the sun, it leaves a path of dust and rocks. The American Meteor Society has a great way to show this on their website. Each year, Earth crosses through this path around mid-August. Ashley Barrosi talked to David Grees from Case Western Reserve University about why this show in the sky is so special. We have something spectacular in the night sky that we can continue to take in over the next few weeks. So can you talk more about what is so special about the Perseid meteor shower for folks uh, really across the country? The Perseid meteor shower, which peaks on the night of August 12th, 11th and 12th this year, is really one of nature's special annual nighttime treats for us. The Perseids are special for really three reasons. The first is that there are a lot of them. They are kind of the most prolific meteor shower. In peak years, they can have up to 100, sometimes even as many as 200 meteors per, uh, per hour. So that's quite spectacular. Um, the second is that they're actually known for being particularly fast moving and bright meteors. So they're known for fireballs. And the third is just the time of year. You know, we would be a little less excited, to be honest, about the Perseids if they happened in January or February, but they happen in the middle of August when the nights are pleasant and it's nice to be outside. And so if you are up late on an August night under dark skies, especially after midnight and the pre-dawn hours is, is when the viewing is best, uh, you can get a real treat by seeing, looking up and, and seeing these meteors. And is there anywhere in particular in that night sky that like folks should be looking to, like, you know, a direction or is it just kind of wide open? Well, the Perseids are called the Perseids because they appear to radiate from a point in the constellation Perseus, which is a northern constellation. But you'll actually get a better view if you look really kind of straight overhead, uh, a little bit away. That's when you'll see them kind of moving rapidly across the field of view. The Perseids are also known for kind of coming from the whole sky. You know, they're not short little tracks that come from one particular spot. So really, if you just lie back and look up, under dark skies, let your eyes, give your eyes time to dark adapt and be patient. Put away your screens and, and take 15, 20 minutes for your eyes to get really used to the dark. Um, then you can see those faint meteors. Now this year is frankly not as good as it is in some other years because the moon is going to be about three days past full and it will be up um, after midnight when the, when the meteors are at their peak. And so, um, we won't see the, as many faint meteors this year as we might under really dark skies, but because the Perseids are known for having particularly bright meteors and, and small fireballs as well, um, we'll still see a lot of the bright ones. All right, yeah, I was going to ask you about that full moon, so I know that that, that could hinder, hinder that a little bit, but as we are inching closer to peak, I mean, even if folks don't have the opportunity to go out the night or the you know, night or two of those peak meteors, mm -hmm. um, how long does the entire kind of season last for the Perseids? Right. The Perseids are actually that, that cloud of debris that we pass through that is associated, that, that gives rise to this meteor shower. We pass through it every year, and it's a kind of broad cloud of debris, and so it's not really limited to just this one particular night. You can see the Perseids for really a couple of weeks on either side of the peak. And of course, there won't be as, as many meteors, but on the other hand, if you get out now or in the next few days, the darker skies might make up for that because the moon will be down. And so you can really uh, maybe see some of those, those fainter meteors, even though there will be fewer of them overall. This is actually a good year to get to know a couple of the, the lesser known summer meteor showers. In fact, there is um, there are two that are peaking right around now. They peak a couple of weeks before the Perseids do. Uh, one of them is called the Delta Aquarids, and they peak on the night of, uh, like between the 29th and the 31st, so right around now in, in late July. But they also, like the Perseids, show activity for a few weeks before and after. So they're gonna be commingling with the, with the Perseids. Um, and there's another meteor shower called the Alpha Capricornids that peak, in fact, on the night of July 31st. And there are fewer of them, maybe only uh, six or 10 per hour, but they're particularly known for fireballs too. So it's a good season for watching for meteor showers. And in these next few nights, we will have nice dark skies and maybe all three of those will be uh, a little bit mixed together. 
you know, how fast does this debris come through our atmosphere for it to have that fireball shooting star effect to our naked eye? Yeah, the Perseids are especially fast moving. It turns out that, that we pass through that, that cloud of, it's kind of like grain of sand to maybe, you know, pebble or golf ball size things. And it's the larger ones that would make the really bright fireballs. Um, and those Perseid meteors are entering our atmosphere at 37 miles per second. They're going really, really fast. And that's partly why, like I said earlier, they they tend to make tracks across the whole sky instead of just kind of shorter tracks that, that come right from a point. It is important to get out after midnight, if possible. That's when the Earth is kind of turning into that. We're on the leading edge of the Earth as we enter that that cloud of debris. And so we're kind of getting the, the full frontal um, appearance of, of those meteors. Great. That's great. So try to get away from the light pollution mm -hmm. right night. Mm -hmm. Have a couple more weeks to take this in and probably, like you said, better to do it sooner than later because of that full moon that's right around. Right. right. Um, and I have chatted over the course of the last year or two about some really great um, astronomical things. Do you have any advice of anything that's coming up in the near future that we should kind of keep our eye on? Um, I wish I, I should have checked. Uh, I, I, I'm sorry, I don't have a great answer for that. You know, my my I'm focused on the um, uh, it's not for a while, but you know, the next total solar eclipse is happening um, in uh, in in August of 2026, and it won't be visible from North America. But but uh, I for one plan to be in Spain for that. Can you pack me in your luggage? <laughs> yeah, right, right. Let's 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 make it a let's make it a party. Yeah, no, I know the last one was spectacular, and that mm -hmm. one as well. So yeah, our calendars are marked for that because you know what? It's going to be here before we know it. We're well. just about a year out from now. So, well, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate the insight that you're giving to all of us here across Metro Detroit on how we can take in some spectacular meteors in the night sky. Thank you so much. In fact, the further you get away from the city lights, the better chance you'll have to see a streak of light shooting across the night sky. If you don't mind taking a drive, Michigan has a number of dark sky parks where you can see the meteor shower. The DNR has more parks listed on its website, but these are the closest to Metro Detroit, the Lake Hudson Rec area in Lenaway County, Port Crescent State Park in Huron County, and Dr. T.K. Lawless Park in Cass County.